It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. The King of Cinnabar. In the vast, shimmering landscape of mesa and mountain and sage-covered plain, there were two moving points of life. A golden eagle making easy circles in the sparkling blue sky, and the stage, six hours out of Alta Mesa, rumbling along the ruts of red dusk toward the setting sun. The young woman was tired. An hour ago, her head had begun to nod, and now it was resting comfortably on the shoulder of the boy next to her. Across from them, the third passenger, a cowboy, was stretched diagonally across the compartment, his head in the corner of the seat and his black Stetson covering his face. Oh, easy now. Oh, Bessie. Oh, I knew that was too good to last. Dry wash. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Oh, that's all right, miss. Oh, happens every time I ride a stagecoach. Just when I find that one soft place for my head, we hit a dry wash. <laughs> oh, you're awake, miss. Uh-huh. I guess I use this young man for a pillow. You're mighty lucky I was here, young lady. Why is that? That fellow was fit to be tied. Huh? He was so mad when you went to sleep on his shoulder, I had to keep a six-gun on him to make him hold still. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you believe a word of it, miss. If you want my shoulder, she's yours clean into cinnabar. The arm goes with it. Well, I'll take you up on that. Cinnabar, eh? Want to stay long? I hope to. I bought a cattle ranch near there. I'm going to Cinnabar, too. To stay? If I have any luck. It's nice. Uh, maybe I better introduce myself. I'm Ben Farley. And I'm Jesse Meredith. What about you, stranger? Hop along, Cassidy. Bar 20, north of here. I get off the next stop. I see. Well, is, uh, is that where we leave it? Leave what? This lady's Jesse Meredith, I'm Ben Farley, and you're Hopalong Cassidy. Just that. Nobody asks any more questions about what we were before, where we came from, why we're here. That's right. I like that. I'm awful tired of answering questions. <laughs> uh, you'll find things are a little different out here, Ben. We don't give a hoot about what a man used to be, just what he is. Does that go for me, too? Yes, for you, too, Jesse. I hope you're right. I've got $250, and and I want to start up a dress shop in Cinnabar. There are quite a few women around there, and I can sew pretty well. You likely know a lot more about sewing than I do about raising cattle, Jesse. (laughs) You'll know a lot more by this time next year, Ben. I've just got to make good, Mr. Cassidy. Well, all you need is a pair of strong hands, some sand in your gizzard, and a few real friends. You see? You're ahead of the game already. Huh? You've got one good friend right now. Thanks. When you find out what you're up against, uh, drop me a line at the bar 20. Never can tell. My partner and I might find time to mosey down and give you a hand. Up against? What do you mean? Bill McGrath. They call him the King of Cinnabar. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The King of Cinnabar. It was only a few weeks after the meeting on the Alta Mesa stage that the letter came addressed to Hopalong Cassidy at the Bar 20. Dear Mr. Cassidy, Ben and I talked again last night about what has happened since we came to Cinnabar three weeks ago. And again, I asked him to write to you. I have a feeling Ben is up against something too big for one man that will have to have help if he's to get out of this thing alive. You see, on the first day he got here... He rode out with Sheriff Pete Cooney to look at the cattle he'd bought. He found out what you were talking about on stage that day. Yes, he found out about King McGrath. Mm. 
Five hundred head. Not much to look at, are they, Sheriff? Scrawniest, thirstiest, most miserable bunch of cows north of the Rio Grande. When you plan to move them, Ben? Move them where? Onto McGrath's range. All they need is plenty of water and some good graze. Well, I've got that right here. Not for three months a year, you ain't. Every ranch in the valley dries up in July and stays that way until the October rains. Except the lazy M, McGrath spread. So everybody moves their stuff onto his land to hold them over. Right. How much a head? Dollar a head a month. He boards around 5,000 head there during the summer months. Yeah. 15,000 a year. That's not bad. Ain't no other answer, sonny. Unless you want your cows to die. You better ride back to town and talk to McGrath. And talk nice. Because all he's got to do is give his form and the sign and you're through in Cinnabar. Where will I find him? Well, now let me see. It's Saturday afternoon. Likely find him at the North Star Saloon. You're Bill Farley. Ben. Oh, yeah, Ben. And you got 500 head. That's right, Mr. McGrath. Well, you look like a nice young fellow. Reckon we can take care of you. You can move them over tomorrow. Be $500 for the first month, payable in advance. That's why I'm here. Huh? 500 is all I got to my name. I got a million things to take care of before I can get going. They can wait. The cattle can't. What about the second month? Better borrow yourself another 500 somewhere. And if I can't? That ain't hard to figure. You move them off just like you moved them on. And they die. Yeah, they die. Unless you decide maybe to sell them to me. How much? Oh, depending on what kind of a mood I'm in at the time. From three to five, I'd say. Ah. And you'll get 20 for them at the railhead. Well, that's my proposition. Take it or leave it. Oh, uh... I wouldn't know it's around for any other offers. When I make a price on a cow around here, there generally ain't any other bidders. You've been having things your own way around here for quite a spell, haven't you? There's an old saying, Sonny. The man who holds the water is king of the cinnabar. Sounds fine. The folks who have any use for kings. I don't. You're as short on brains as you are on money. Maybe. But I'll feed my stock to the buzzards before I'll pay you a dime. So long, McGrath. King McGrath. <laughs> well, what's happened to you, Ben? I haven't seen you for over two weeks. I've been busy, Jesse. I, I don't know yet, but I think I've found something. What? The answer to this McGrath business. Oh? The man who holds the water is king of the Cinnabar, he said. And he's right. 5,000 head in this valley. Eight miserable little ranches. Well, there's graze for 10,000 head if you can find water for them. That's a trouble, you see. McGrath's got the ranchers jumping around like trained seals. He told him there was no other answer. And he's got them believing it. But I think I found a way to lick it. I think I... Ben. I've... Huh? Ben, this is Mrs. McGrath, one of my customers. How do you do, Mr. Farley? Uh... How do you do? Well, the dress is lovely, Jesse. I'm so pleased with it. I'm glad. Uh, what did your husband think? Why, I, I, I never showed it to him. Oh, I see. You see, he, he's such a busy man, you know. He can't be bothered with silly things like new dresses uh, and such uh, like that. J- Jesse, uh, maybe I'd better be going. No. No, not yet, please. You see, I couldn't help hearing what you said about Mr. McGrath. And you're such nice young people, both of you. Please, please don't try to fight him. He's different now from when I married him. He's cruel. He's... Well, I came to tell you to go while you can. I don't want to see any more of it. I don't want to see any more killing. What makes you think there'll be any more? My, my husband called and every man on the ranch had a meeting in the bunkhouse last night about that dam on Cash Creek. A dam? Yes. That's what I started to tell you about, Jesse. Huh? There's a natural dam site on Cash Creek about five miles up the gorge. I found it last week. Oh, please. It'll hold back enough spring runoff to keep every ranch in the valley over the summer. You know what this dam will mean, Mrs. McGrath. Well, I don't care anymore. I only want to help you. You can't help me. By telling me what kind of a stew your husband's cooking up for us. If and when he picks out the recipe. A fellow named Starbuck, an engineer. 
I ought to be here Thursday to take a look at the site. That gives me four days to get the ranchers together. Ben! Oh. Ben, there you hurt. Clip my shoulder. You came through the window. Hold it. Okay. Now. Ah, there he goes. You got a mighty determined husband, Mrs. McGrath. I tried to tell you. There are too many for you, Ben. No. No, Jesse. Remember what he said? All it takes is a pair of strong hands and some sand in your gizzard. And a good friend. You'd better write to hop along, Cassidy, then. Not yet. Not till I try it alone. But I'm writing you anyway, Mr. Cassidy. For the last three days and nights, Ben's been riding from ranch to ranch, talking to cattlemen. Some of them believe in him, and some think he's crazy. All of them are afraid to say anything. All except one, that is. His name was... Slim Hardesty. He liked Ben and offered to put up some money. He was found dead in front of his barn this morning with a bullet in his back. So I'm asking you for help before it's too late. Jesse Meredith. Well, California? Hmm. I got a thousand feet of fence to put in up at North Spring. Yeah, and there's that two-year-old filly I supposed to gentle this week. Yeah, the bunkhouse needs a coat of paint. And I promised Johnny I'd ride line with him tomorrow. Mm, got a million other chores crying to get done right now. Me too. Well, California, I... Where are you going? Just beating you to the draw, Hoppy. Going out to wrangle a pack horse. I reckon we'll be set to leave for Cinnabar in about a half hour. <laughs> Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and the King of Cinnabar. With four days on the trail behind them and one more to go, Hoppy and California ride up to the Doby Stage Station, the last one before Cinnabar. The host, a fat, red-faced little man, seems to want to talk as he fills glasses with cool water from the Ola in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, if you ask me, they're due for a blow-off over at the Cinnabar. Yeah, real first-class six-gun blow-off. Ain't nobody in town that's neutral. King McGrath's that kind of a man, you know. You're either firm or you're against him. You seem to know all about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. The engineer came through day before yesterday. Big, lanky, red-headed fella named Starbuck. Yeah, he reckons the idea young Farley has for a dam on Cash Creek's a mighty good one. Hmm. Thanks. Uh, the Starbuck riding alone? Yep. Uh, said one of the boys from town was to meet him down the road a ways. Horses is all watered, Hoppy. Right. Thanks, mister. Guess we'll be on our way. Figure to make Cinnabar by nightfall. Hmm. You never knew there was a war brewing around here, Hoppy. Oh, Cinnabar is a nice, quiet-looking town. Oh, there it is. Hmm? Jesse Meredith, newest Paris fashions. <laughs> She'll make good, all right. Come on, let's tie up here. Mm. Easy, boy. We'll get that saddle off of you before long. Yeah. Well, where do you reckon we'll find this Farley fella? Uh, no telling. He's been riding across the country like a banshee for the last week. From what I hear, I well, Cassidy. Oh, Mister McGrath. Mister, come on now, Hoppy. We was closer friends than that. How are things on the bar 20? Fine, I guess. How about you? Just dandy. We got a big improvement society around here now, you know. Ambitious young fella named Farley, who's going to make a lot of changes. I ain't quite made up my mind yet what I'm going to do. When you decide, let me know, will you? Don't worry. When I decide, you'll know it. <laughs> See you later, boy. Hmm. Don't know as I like the way that man wears his head. <laughs> That's treason, California. You're talking against the king. Come on. And that's all you can tell us, Jesse? Yes, Mr. Cassidy. We don't know what's going on. When I wrote you, it looked like war any minute. Windows were broken at ranch houses, mysterious notes stuck under doors, and suddenly it all stopped. A grass showed up in town with a big smile on his face and started patting people on the back. Oh, I knew a horse like that once. 
toady up to you nice as pie. And then when you wasn't looking, he'd haul off and kick you over the closest hill. That's McGrath. Come on, California. I want to find Ben. I'd like to ride up Cash Creek Canyon. Maybe have a talk with him on the way. Hoppy, not by a... Yep, by a damn sight. <laughs> Come on. Well, there she is, Huppy. That's the gorge down there. That's uh, unnatural, all right. Uh-huh. Wonder why they never thought of it before. McGrath took care of that. He had him so buffalo they wouldn't take a step without permission. Yeah, this is going to change a lot of things. Hmm. Well, what's the matter? How long since you've been up here? Hmm. About a week? Why? Looks like someone was here a couple of hours ago from those tracks. Yeah, they get down over the rim toward the base of the overhang there. Painted rock. Any reason for anyone to be fooling around here now? Not that I know of, Hoppy. Let's leave the horses here and get out on foot. Whoever made those tracks is still there. Easy now. He can't be far. Still no tracks going out. No. He's ahead of us. Hold it. Huh? He's coming around the shore there. I hear him. Put him up! Huh? Get up your hands, I said. Now, wait a minute, Hoppy. What is this? Ben! Who is it, Ben? Sorry, Mike. We're a little jumpy, I guess. Uh, This is Hopalong Cassidy, Mike Starbuck, the engineer. Starbuck? Yeah, it's lucky my horse didn't jump clean down to the canyon, mister. Oh, I'm sorry. Ben and I just came up to look things over here. Thought maybe one of my grass boys was nosing around. Oh, no offense. I was making a few last-minute sketches, Ben. Going to use them at the meeting tonight. We'll see you there. Good, good. Well, better be moving along. So long, fellas. Bye. So long. Come on. I want to see what he's looking at around the corner here. What's up? I'll let you know in a minute. Well, this is as far as he went. What's on your mind, Hoppy? I wish I knew. Look at that. He left a little pile of rocks here at the base of the cliff. What do you suppose he is up to? I sure do suspect him of something. I wish I knew what it was. Look, I hired the guy to work for me. You hired an engineer named Starbuck. What do you mean? I heard Starbuck was a tall, lanky fellow with red hair. Red hair? But this fella... Yeah. After making a pretty careful survey of Cash Creek Canyon, I figure we can throw a temporary earth dam across the creek at the gorge in about six weeks. Back up enough water to get us through this summer. The total cost... Will be around fifty thousand dollars. Well, my gosh, I never would have believed it. Uh, wonder what the king will say to that. Ben, well, Hoppy, let's sneak out the side door. I want to talk to the sheriff. All right, so this engineer is a phony. So McGrath had the real one killed, or maybe done it himself. He's done it before, a dozen times, for all I know. It's his usual way of dealing with a man who stands up to him. What are you waiting for, Pete? Just this. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You can arrest some poor waddy out in the range without two bits in his pockets and make her stick. But not King McGrath. When I go after that man, I want both barrels loaded with the right kind of ammunition. And until I got it, I ain't making a move. What kind of ammunition do you need, Pete? A confession. You get him to confess he hired the killing of that engineer... Or that he ordered someone to shoot Slim Hardesty in the back. And by St. Peter, I'll hang King McGrath from the tallest tree in Cinnabar Valley. Ben. Jessie, what's up? Mrs. McGrath, I just talked to her. What is it, Jessie? She knows, she, she knows what's going on. Can you trust her? Sure you can. Go ahead, Jessie. The engineer, he's an imposter. One of McGrath's oh, men. we've already guessed that much. The two of them are meeting at midnight at Kelly's livery stable to get a wagon. A wagon? Don't ask me why. They're going to take it up Cash Creek Canyon, up the rim, she said, tonight. Uh, God... What's King McGrath doing with the wagon? That's all she heard. Kelly's stable at midnight, eh? Thanks, Jesse. We'll take it from there. Gosh, it's so dark in this here stable, I can't even see to think. Shh. Hold it now. Here's the wagon. Mm. Load it down. Do you feel anything? Wait. I guess it's safe to light a match. Ah, get a look at that. Dynamite. Yeah. Get out of the way. 
Ja. Hold the lantern high. That all right? Yeah. <laughs> Good work, Mr. Starbuck. Look okay, McGrath? How much we got? Ten cases. Enough to move a couple of mountains into Cash Creek Canyon. And then some. <laughs> <laughs> that ought to take care of the little boy with a big idea, huh? You know, there's no use shooting up a lot of people and maybe getting a sheriff down on you when he can do the same trick so peaceable with ten cases of dynamite. What time you got? Ten o'clock. We'll meet here at twelve, like I said. I don't want to take a chance of being seen pulling this thing out of town. Uh, if you see Cassidy again, give him my regards. Hmm, what's on your mind, Hoppy, if I may express a natural curiosity? A pile of rock. Mm-hmm. Ask a silly question. He wants a confession. I think we can get him one. If we take the dynamite out of those boxes and fill them with sand... Hmm? We got two hours till midnight. Now listen, I want you to get this straight. Mm-hmm. Bell and the sheriff and I'll have our hands full round up a posse. The rest is going to be up to you, me, and get it the first time because I won't have. To... Take it easy, McGrath. Nervous? Why not? You hit her up the wrong way, jostle those boxes back you there. You got them tied down, haven't you? Yeah, but be careful anyway. Dynamite does funny things. How much farther? See that juniper tree up there in the moonlight? Yeah. That's it. We'll have to carry it down the trail a box at a time. I marked the spot with a pile of rocks. Huh. You nervous, McGrath? Shut up. All right, gents. Put him up. <laughs> The next one parts your toupee. Uh, and number three gives you indigestion. I said put them up. Yeah, that's better. Well, if it ain't Mr. McGrath. What do you want? I hate to bust up a romantical buggy ride, boys. Uh, you two fellas out sparking in the moonlight? I got a line camp up the canyon. We're taking up supplies. Supplies, eh? Canned goods. Ain't you a mite off in your range, McGrath? I thought the lazy M was ten miles to the other side of the ridge. Oh, but that don't matter now, because I come to hear you sing. What are you talking about? I'll explain while you set up there on top of them boxes of uh, 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 canned goods. <clears throat> now, first place, I want to know what you did with an engineer named Starbuck. And second place, I want to know who you hired to kill Slim Hardest. You're crazy. Get away from those boxes. Why, nothing but canned goods. These wooden boxes, you see. And when I need some luck, I always knock on wood. Like this. Oh, tell him, McGrath. Tell him. Shut up. It's his high tool if it blows. Oh, oh you, you, you told me a fib, huh? There ain't a canned goods in them boxes. Well, maybe I'll just back off a weeds and put a forty-four slug into one of them, huh? No, 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 don't, no, don't, 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 I... Once again, that was a little high. Uh, next one goes through the label. All right. All right. I did it. I killed Starbuck, shot him on the trail, stuck his body in a crack in the rocks of Juniper Spring, ten miles out of town. Oh, what about Slim? Logan did that. I paid him. Who's Logan? Me. California. Well, it's okay, Hobby. Oh, they're jabbering like magpies. This way, Sheriff. Hey, hey, did you get it? Stem to stern. You can start fitting them both for a rope necktie. Hey, did you get any dynamite? Yeah, they figured to blow painted rock and half the ridge here down into the canyon. That would have finished any idea to put a dam in this spot once and for all. Yes, sir. Okay. Come on, boys. I ain't exactly sorry it's over, Hoppy. Got quite a bit to tell you. And I've got something to tell you. Hmm? Come on, let's get back to town. Time the sheriff started earning his money. Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. Well, you're on your way now, Ben. It looks like it, Hoppy. Oh, it was just like you said, Hoppy. Two good hands, a measure of sand. And a good friend. You've got a lot of good friends now, Ben. <laughs> How much longer are you going to keep Jesse in this dress shop? About five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to have someone to keep house for him. With a new dam going up and a herd of cattle to look after. You'll work it out. There'll be plenty of trouble ahead. There always is. You are the kind of people who can lick it. It's like a new life. Yeah. 
Oh, and speaking of that, I'd like to put some new life into California. You see, I just told him. Told him what? That we got our wires crossed and he was pounding on a box of real dynamite in that wagon. Oh, no. What? Matter of fact, that's why I'm here. Got any smelling salts, Jesse? <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye from Hopalong Cassidy. Hoppy and California are hitting the trail homeward again, and after this little adventure, the Bar 20 is going to be a restful sight. Hope you enjoyed this friendly visit and that you'll remember to tune in next time these two fighting cowboys get involved in another thrilling escapade. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The King of Cinnabar was written by Harold Swanton. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.